When you build your CI CD pipeline with GitLab, the public images from Docker Hub don't always contain all the dependencies you need. So quite often, after starting a Docker image, you still need to do a bit of setup in your pipeline. This approach adds a lot of boilerplate configuration that can even slow down your pipeline. In this tutorial, I will show you how easy it is to build a custom Docker image with all the dependencies you need and push it to the GitLab container registry and later on use it directly in your pipeline. I'll be using GitLab.com and their shared runners for this tutorial. If you wish to understand the principles behind this approach, I highly recommend that you first use GitLab.com and not your self-hosted GitLab infrastructure. So this is currently the job that I have. It starts here with the base image, which is Python. It just prints out the different versions available. And in this case, I'm assuming that I want to do something with PyTest. So for this reason, I'm using the Python package manager to install PyTest. And then I'm just checking again if this has been installed properly. So if we take a look at the GitLab job, we'll be able to see here which Docker image is being pulled. And then the script that I have added, essentially uh, installing PyTest. And you will see here it is downloading PyTest and then it's printing out the versions. This is a simplified example, but it shows like what you would face normally when you're starting with a base image and you need to install all these dependencies on top. So before you can actually do anything with your job, you have to do all these things in advance. So in order to create a custom Docker image, the first step is to create a Docker file. And in a Docker file will essentially describe how that image should be composed. So I'm gonna go ahead in my project and add a file which is called Docker file. And again, as an example, it's going to be a very, very simple example. This is not a tutorial on how to write really complex Docker files. I'm just showing up the principles. So I'm going to start here from a base image, which is Python. And additionally, I'm going to add the command. So essentially, I'm using the package manager to install PyTest. So super, super simple. So let's go ahead and expand this pipeline and start building this Docker image based on what we have. And we want to use automation for this. I'm not going to build the image locally and push it to the repository. Actually, I don't want to do anything locally. I just want to let GitLab do the automation things uh, and have everything in a pipeline. And I think it's totally fine to have everything in the same pipeline. I will also show you a way on how you can make sure that this doesn't happen too often. I mean, the building of the image. So let's start here with a job, which is called build image, and we'll have as a dependency Docker, but this will be not enough to build this image and to push it to the GitLab container registry. We also have to use Docker in Docker. This is essentially like when you have Docker installed locally, you open up your terminal, uh, type in Docker dash dash version, this is working, but when you're trying to build or to do something else, we will tell you, that Docker is not running. This, we need Docker in Docker is essentially the Docker daemon, which will be available as a service. So I'm gonna write here services. I have to write it properly. And the service that will start is Docker, Docker in Docker. So dint is Docker in Docker. Okay, so then we can go ahead and write the script. And to understand a bit like what we're trying to do, we can also go directly to GitLab. And you'll find here under packages and registries, this will be the container registry that we are trying to use. And at this point, it will tell you that the container has no images stored for this project. And it will give you here a couple of commands that you need to run. And it will tell you exactly what you need to do to log into this registry and uh, how to build an image and how to push it. These are uh, a great starting point, and we're going to use something very similar to this. So let's go ahead and copy the first command, go back to our script. And if we try to do this, uh, we'll be prompted to enter our username and password. And of course, because we're doing this inside GitLab CI, we can take advantage of a bunch of predefined GitLab CI variables. 
So if you're not aware of this, GitLab offers a bunch of predefined GitLab variables that you can use directly in your pipelines. And some of the variables allow you to have, for example, the registry password. So if I'm searching here for CI registry, uh, you will have here the registry name, the registry user, and also the CI registry password. So this will be automatically injected. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to define any variables. These are available there. And I think this is also one of the reasons why I think it's good to have this only inside GitLab CI. So going back here, all we have to do is write something like Docker login. Where do we want to log in? Well, we're going to log in to a CI registry. And we also have to specify our username and password. So going to specify here the username. This will be the CI registry user. And we can also specify the password with minus P, but this will typically give a warning in the logs. Uh, I don't want to see any warnings there. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply pipe this value and use it from the standard input. So I'm going to do here something like CI registry password. I'm going to pipe it to Docker login. And additionally, let me make this a bit bigger. And additionally, tell Docker login, by the way, get the password from the standard input. So this is the first step here. We are logging into the registry. Otherwise, we'll not be able to build anything. Let's see what's next. So the next step is, of course, to build this image. I'm going to copy the command that you see here. And again, this will uh, give us the command that we need to run, which is Docker build. We're creating here a tag, which will be essentially the latest. In this case, I'm only going to build the latest version. I'm not going to get into tagging. I will assume that whatever I have in the Docker file is whatever I need at this point. We can leave this as it is right now. But again, instead of having hard-coded values in our pipeline, we can uh, use again the CI registry image. So I'm going to use here the variable CI registry image. And by the way, if at any point in time you're a bit unsure, like how do these values look like, simply add to your pipeline something like echo and then the value that you're unsure about. Don't just use values because by, by making assumptions in terms of what they do and how they work. Also try to get an understanding of what's going on there. Okay, so we're building this Docker image. And finally, let's copy the last command. So this will be Docker push and essentially gonna push this to the same to the same registry where this image is. So this will have the full registry name and the full registry image. So as you can see, our entire script doesn't contain any references to our project or to whatever else we have inside here. So this makes this configuration very portable. So let's commit these changes now and see how the pipeline does. So if you're going to the latest pipeline, we can go inside the build image job and uh, we can see here that everything has been completed successfully. There are some warnings, but this is outside of the scope of this tutorial. And then we can go to packages and registries inside a container registry. And we'll be able to see here that we have an image and that the latest version has been pushed uh, about one minute ago. So essentially, we have built the image. We have pushed it to the GitLab container registry. And we can now use this image inside our pipeline. We also seen that if we go here in our pipeline that we have two jobs running in parallel and essentially we don't want to build this image all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a schedule and we're going to build this image only, let's say, once per day according to our schedule and we're not going to run this with our pipeline all the time. So the next step would be to define some rules here and the rule would be essentially we want to make sure that the pipeline source is schedule. So CI pipeline source. 
equals equals schedule. Okay. And additionally, what we will be able to do is to add here an additional job. Let's call it run tests. And this run test will be pretty similar to what we had here before. So for example, instead of the Python image, we're gonna use the image that we have built. We're gonna remove PyTest just to make sure that this is still working. And additionally, we're gonna also add these rules here. So I'm gonna change here the rules. This should not run on a schedule. So when we're running the schedule, we only run the build image. Uh, same story for the original job. Just gonna keep it for, for reference purposes. And what we also need to do here is to specify the image. Now, at this point, this is totally up to you if you wanna have here a hard-coded value or if you just wanna use the CI registry image. It's totally up to you. If, if you think this is gonna cause some issues, then it's better to have a hard-coded value. Uh, you can also use this image between different projects. So you can have, if you want a standalone project that builds an image and multiple projects can use the same image. In that case, you have to use a hard-coded value for that image here. All right. So what we have at this point, uh, we're still keeping the original job. Uh, we're not running it on a schedule. We have the new job, which is using the image that we have pushed. And it's always, because we only have an image, which is the latest image, we're going to always pull that one. And the last step here now is to go ahead and actually create a schedule. So now let's push it, but also go ahead and create a schedule. So from GitLab, inside the job, CICD schedules, new schedule, let's call it build Docker image. And we can run it every day. Just save it. For debugging purposes, if you wish, you can simply manually trigger it once. So let's go back to the project and see how the jobs are doing. We'll see here that run test works properly. So what's going on here? We'll see here that we're now pulling this custom Docker image. We're not installing anything anymore. Uh, and PyTest is then available because the Docker image contains this. Runtime here, 39 seconds. Let's take a look at the older job. This is 40 seconds. So as you can see, it's not a huge difference in terms of the time it took uh, GitLab to download this image because essentially they have a pretty similar size and uh, what's doing there are essentially the same steps. But essentially this is how you can do it. Finally, I just wanted to point out that not specifying a version for your Docker images is not considered a good practice as it will always run the pipeline against the latest version of the image. So for example, here for the Docker images that I've used, go to Docker Hub and use a specific tag for the images that you need. For example, my GitLab CI pipeline should look more or less like this with the versions being specified. And if you are anyway at Docker Hub, do take a look at the size of the images you're using. The smaller they are, the faster your pipeline. Look for tags containing Alpine or Slim. These are versions with fewer dependencies which you may not need anyway. If this tutorial was helpful and you want to help me grow this channel, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch up with you next time.